Welcome to the Build Fire Workshop, where we learn how to build new features on the Build Fire platform. Today, we're going to learn about the authentication server and services and how to use it within our plugins. Let's dive right in. So in our previous uh, tutorial, we showed you how to set up this uh, simple task list using the BuildFire data store and how to sync up between the control side of a plugin and the widget side of the plugin. Uh, the intent of this uh, plugin was to continuously add in features uh, so that you can see um, all the different features that the SDK provides us, as well as our uh, BuildFire MBAS to save data and uh, use additional features that traditionally we would have to develop that we don't have to develop under the BuildFire platform. So the next step is um, having the users select which tasks they've completed. So after the app owner has set up the list of tasks in the data store, um, the user would download the app and then just set, check off the tasks that they feel uh, have been completed. Now, uh, for us to do that, we need some sort of authentication for the user. We need to be able to differentiate user A from user B. And if user A uh, jumps from device to device to web or, or whatever it may be, that the data goes along with his authentication. And so BuildFire helps us do this through the authentication uh, feature in the SDK, of which uh, we will show you um, how to use here. Now, just so we can give a quick reload here, what it will do is basically um, prompt you to log in at the very beginning uh, of the widget if you're not currently logged in. Now, this is all part of the core um, BuildFire platform and um, uh, from registration to forgot password uh, to allowing Facebook, uh, Google, Twitter, whatever other integrations, SSO integrations for the login. Right now, we're just gonna keep it um, uh, straightforward with the default settings, but allow people to log in using uh, their username and password before they continue. So now I'm authenticated here. So how, how was I able to do that? So we're going to jump over to the widget side of the plugin. So under the widget side, we created a new JavaScript uh, file. And in here, it's extremely simple. All we did is we created a singleton called auth manager, and we created a function called get user. And all that uh, get current user does is called build fire auth get current user. And if uh, the user doesn't exist, meaning they haven't logged in previously, so not user, no user was returned in the callback, call BuildFire login and don't allow them to cancel. So some plugins, it's okay if a user cancels and they can continue on um, uh, using the plugin not authenticated. Uh, in this particular plugin, it really doesn't make sense if you're not logged in. So we're just going to say allow cancel to be false, which means the cancel option on the login will be removed. Uh, and then give me the callback to the callback piece of that. Uh, we added another method to this singleton here, which is enforce login. And all this does basically is listen into the build fire auth on log out and just ask them to log in again by saying get current user, get current user will say, hey, there is no user. Go ahead and log in again. Um, so it's it's as simple as that to make sure that they stay lo stay logged in. Now we can make this a lot more robust and and a lot uh, a lot better with messaging to the user. But again, for the sake of this tutorial, we just want to see how this is used. And so uh, that's that's all it is. Build fire dot authentication dot off that get current user will get you whatever user is logged in now. If there is no user logged in now, you can ask them to log in. And you can listen in to whenever they log out or on user change uh, and then take an action there. In this case, we're going to ask you to log in, uh, log right back in. Um, so all the headache of setting up a database uh, under the proper compliance and making sure that um, a user is able to register, a user is able to 
um, reset their password, if they forgot their password, if you, they, if you want Facebook integrate, you don't have to deal with any of that as a BuildFire developer. All you have to do is just say buildfire.auth.login and on the control panel side, the app owner can require first name, last name, address on registration. They can uh, turn off Facebook integration so that they can't log in using their Facebook account. All that, that headache that I'm sure uh, everybody listening to uh, this video is more than capable of doing, but waste months developing uh, and maintaining, this all goes away with BuildFire. That being said, you could always create your own, but it's always great when BuildFire provides you a backend uh, system that you can easily integrate with. Uh, on the index file, all we do is reference, since it's on the same uh, path, we just reference off manager JS, and then uh, when we load the tasks, so we load the task. If there's any update on the task, we render those tasks. And we just say off manager get current user and load the task for that particular user. Uh, and we also say off manager dot enforce login just in case they log out midway to force them to log back in. And then uh, load user tasks. All we're going to do here is basically loop through each task and see if this user is actually um, uh, completed it or not and we'll turn this bar to green and just some indicator that is complete um, and we'll do that in the next step uh, and that's that'll be using the build fire user data get it's extremely similar to data store um, however has some very fundamental differences that we'll explain in the following video uh, so I hope this helped you understand off manager it's extremely simple to use it saves us hours and hours and hours of development and months and months of maintenance um, so uh, buildfire.auth is extremely powerful. Make sure you use that so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. In the next episode, we'll go over user data and how we're going to save user specific data, data that needs to be segmented out for this plugin, this plugin instance, as well as this particular user. So we'll go over that in the next video. Make sure you check in to watch. Thank you. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with our latest content. If you do so, you'll also be entered into a raffle where you can win some BuildFire merchandise. Thanks for watching.